So I completed the Modern Warfare 3 campaign and I gotta say it is extremely disappointing, underwhelming and boring. Just so you guys know, I actually did enjoy the previous two campaigns a lot, Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2. I played through them multiple times. I'm not the type of guy to hate on every Call of Duty campaign. I really enjoy most of them, but this one was not it. You can easily tell that this campaign was rushed and it was not meant to be a full-on new title, it was meant to be a DLC for Modern Warfare 2. Before I even start talking about the campaign itself, there is a glitch happening which prevents you from playing the Modern Warfare 3 campaign unless you buy Modern Warfare 2. So to play this campaign, you have to buy two games, MW2 and MW3. And furthermore, there is another bug where your stats, your progress, your cut points, everything you have ever done in Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer will get reset and deleted if you try to play this campaign. Imagine you have like 7,000 cut points on your account and then all of those cut points get deleted because you tried to play the new story mode. Holy sh**. This is unbelievable. How the f*** do I play the game?! How do I play this game? Now, as for the campaign itself, it starts off very strongly. The first mission is you freeing Makarov from his prison. And it's a really nice mission, cinematic, action-packed, good dialogue. After you free Makarov and interact with him, the game gives you an option to choose your answer for Makarov's question. Andre, who holds power in this gulag? The guards? Or the prisoners. Which is it, Bartok? The prisoners. <laughs> yes, Andrei. That's why the guards need guns. <laughs> so I thought to myself, okay, so in this campaign, we're gonna make choices which will affect the outcome of the story. But no, no, that's not what happened. This is the only time the game gives you a choice to make for yourself. This will never happen at any point in the campaign again, which in my opinion is a huge wasted opportunity. After the first mission, everything goes downhill. We get introduced to a new mission style in Call of Duty open combat mission. In these missions, it's an open world area and you can go wherever you want to. Now, you would expect this to be a good thing, freedom of choice. A lot of open world games are really well made and entertaining. However, I don't think this is. Open combat missions provide some freedom to you so you can go wherever you want and uh, make your own choices, but uh, it, they're very boring because they all follow the same pattern. You go from point A to point B to point C and you plant or defuse something. That's pretty much it. There is no narrative, no interesting music, nothing cinematic happening. It's just a bunch of random enemies scattered everywhere. You shoot them a bit, you kill a few enemies, you plant, you go to the next objective, do the same thing. And yeah, it's boring. Okay, here we go. No! I did it though, I did it! Don't... Jesus Christ, what a ju- <laughs> Also, the AI in these open combat missions is brain dead. Holy shit. <laughs> Hello there! He's got the spirit, but I think he's a bit confused. What is he doing? Uh, uh, Alex? And just to make matters worse, over half of the missions in the game are open combat missions, which follow the same formula over and over again. There's a few missions I like in the game. I like the first mission, the snow mission, and the final mission. They actually have a narrative, they have music, they have interesting battles. They have dialogue between you and your squad mates. You're all working together. They're moving on. We clear? Clear. Should have killed them when we had the chance, John. If I want your advice, I'll ask. Let's not forget, we wouldn't be here if you hadn't been caught. I got caught because I was getting close. Wouldn't be too proud of that, General. Ideas to get close without getting caught. 
it's way more entertaining in my opinion than these open combat missions where you walk around by yourself shoot a couple of enemies plant something and then repeat it and yes there is a no russian mission in this game it was very anticipated at the end of the mw2 campaign it was uh, teased in the post credit scene everyone was hyped everyone was speculating what was going to happen and it turns out that it's just a short glorified cutscene you can't make a choice you don't kill civilians it's just makarov strapping a bomb to a woman soldier on a russian plane to put the blame on Uzbekistan. Now, I know that plot sounds interesting, but I don't think it was executed well. What made the original No Russian so great and memorable is that it shocked you and made you feel guilty. You had a choice. You want to shoot the civilians or not? In this version of No Russian, you have no choice at all. You can't even shoot civilians because the game gives you no ammo in your pistol. <laughs> Help me. I'm give not me a terrorist. Sucker. Give me the fuck. Get the why they want they don't give you ammunition to shoot the civilian. Oh my god. Holy shit. This is like Dude, I'm literally doing a homelander. Shoot two civilians to save like the hundreds. Dude, they pussied out of it. God damn. I'm actually so sad about that. Okay, so I talked about the missions and the gameplay. Now, let's discuss this story for a little bit. I loved the cutscenes, they look beautiful, the dialogue is interesting. My personal favorite cutscene is where one for one and Graves are trash talking each other. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, fucking believable. So, you missed me? Well, technically, you did, didn't you? Laswell, if you're tracking this, let's call an airstrike. Ghost, that is not nice. Were you up to? I'm up to doing my fucking job, kid. You should try it sometime. My fucking job is to kill the enemy. Guess what you are? Let's keep this professional, boys. However, I do feel like this story suffers because of the open combat missions. And the reason for that is, as I explained, there is no narrative. You're playing by yourself, randomly killing people in the area. As for the Modern Warfare 2 2022 campaign, for example, you were working together with your comrades in almost every mission. It felt like you were a member of the team. Uh, I was bonding with the characters. I grew to care about them. In this game, I don't feel that same bond with them. I don't feel the same friendship between them. Part of that is because they removed Alejandro from the game, my favorite character in MW2. I've got my orders. And now you have yours. And who the fuck do you think you are, cabron? My men are inside! What a Sigma male. I do hope they bring him back. That's why I think the snow mission was my favorite mission in the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, because everyone was working together. There was interesting dialogue between characters. You had one for one, Farah, and even Shepard playing with you on the same team. And in that mission, one for one characters and Shepard were bantering together. We should take him out now. You should shut the hell up. Either way, we need to call now, Captain. We can stay low. Let him pass. Should have engaged already. Zip it, Shepard. That is incredible. Give me more of that. More dialogue and bonding moments between characters in the game. He's out of line, but he's right. Huge spoilers coming up, so if you don't want to hear it, uh, leave the video, please. But in the final mission, at the end, Soap gets killed by Makarov. Take this to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. It definitely wasn't a, an emotional death like in the original MW3. He died in one shot, you know, he got popped in the head, boom, instantly dead. And uh, that's fine, I get it, it's realistic. People in, in real war die quick. I think Soap's death is fine the way it happened. However, I didn't really care about him because we only knew him for one game and even in that game, we didn't really spend time with him that much. Personally, I think killing Gaz would be a better choice because Gaz was with Captain Price since the first game, Modern Warfare 2019. I think if Gaz died instead, 
Captain Price would have a motive to get revenge on Makarov. Captain Price did not care a single bit about Soap dying. I'm sorry, but he did not care. Then we get a scene of Captain Price, Ghost and Gaz scattering Soap's ashes on a hill. This was a good scene, I liked the dialogue of the morning, the scenery was nice and the music, beautiful. Then the story ends, which confirms that Modern Warfare 4 will happen. The story was not concluded, Makarov escaped and he's alive. So hopefully they will finish him off in Modern Warfare 4. Or maybe they will milk this franchise as much as possible and we will get uh, Modern Warfare 5 at some point. But that's not it. We have a post credit scene in this game and it pissed me off. In the post credit scene, Cabinet Prize kills Shepard by shooting him in the head in an office. I bet the developers wanted to kill Shepard in the most anticlimactic way possible because holy shit, what was that? Do you guys remember the original MW2 where Shepard was this epic final boss fight and you killed him to save Captain Price? Yeah, well, in this game, oh, Captain Price uh, casually shoots him in the head at the end of the game. Uh, no problem. So yeah, in conclusion, this campaign had a few good missions. A lot of good cutscenes, but besides that, lots of boring open combat missions, the story is not concluded, Shepard died in the most anticlimactic way possible, Soap died way too early because he's not even an established character yet, we didn't know him for long enough to care. The anticipated no Russian mission was a huge disappointment and completely inferior to the original. There are no redeeming factors about this campaign. This campaign is just mid, as the kids say nowadays. I would give it a 5 out of 10 on a normal day, however because the game is broken and some people can't even play it, and because it resets all your progress in MW2 multiplayer, I'm gonna have to give it a 2 out of 10. That's gonna be about it, thank you for watching, I will see you later. Mwah.